Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 21 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. Now if you've been following me over the last few weeks we've been looking at sound on various systems and today it's time for the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. Now these two systems both have the same sound chip so this is going to be fairly straightforward. However they are a little bit different to the other systems we've looked at so let's start and have a quick look at how the hardware works and what registers we have to control the sound chip within the hardware. So the Game Boy has four sound channels and rather strangely they're all completely different. Channel 1 is a tone channel with what's called a sweep function which allows the sound to change in tone over time. Channel 2 is also a tone channel but it does not have the sweep function so it's a bit more basic. And then channel 3 is what's known as a wave channel. But that description might sound quite interesting but don't get too excited because you're not going to be able to be playing um, digital music or anything. You can only use 16 bytes with one nibble per sample for a total of 32 samples. So you're not going to be playing anything particularly advanced, it's just for general beeps and that kind of thing. And then finally channel 4 is a noise channel and that's very typical compared to the other noise channels we've looked at so there's not going to be any surprises there. Now, as with all other registers on the Game Boy, they are memory mapped, so we can just write to memory locations to set the new settings for our various tone channels. So you can see we've got various options here, and you can see these ones are all related to tone channel 1, these are channel 2, these are channel 3, and these are channel 4. And there is a, a lot of commonality between them, but because each channel has different functionality, there are some differences as well. And we're going to go into looking into those in some detail in just a moment. So one interesting thing about the, the Game Boy's sound registers is not only can you write to them, but you can actually read back as well and get the original values, which in some cases might be useful. And we will actually use that in Chibi Sound later. So let's start and actually look at the code we're going to be looking at today. So this is today's code example. And in the same way as all of the others, we're going to be starting by doing some basic testing of the sound channels, just with some very simple source code. And then we're going to create the Chibi Sound Driver, which just like on all the other systems, is a driver which takes a single byte and creates a variety of tones and noise effects. So this is the same common functionality across all of our systems with Chibi Sound. To start with, we need to turn on our channels. We're going to turn on all the channels using the mixer here. So we, um, we define the left and right mapping of the channels. We're going to turn them all on, so all of these bits are one. And also we need to set the volume to maximum. Maximum volume is seven, and we're setting it on both left and right channel. But do remember that the actual Game Boy is only a mono system built in, but it can take headphones for stereo. So that's how we turn our channels on. And first of all, we're going to look at channel two. Why are we going to look at channel two? Well, channel one is the more advanced channel with the um, sweep register. So we're going to start with the more basic tone channel because that is the kind of base point for all the others. So you can see we're loading a variety of bits into our various um, registers here. So the first one we'll have a look at is this one. So what we need to do is we need to start the tone and that's what this does here, this one here. Specify the top three bits of the tone's value. So we do that here, these are the high bits of the tone value. The low bits are all in here of course. We have the four bits of the volume here and then we have some envelope options which we can use. And we're going to turn the envelope off to start with just by setting the envelope to zero. In this register here, we have the sound length and also something called the wave duty. We'll have a play with the wave duty in a moment. The sound length doesn't actually apply unless this bit is set to one here. So it's going to have no effect in this case just yet. And let's just turn off the noise channel because we don't want to hear any noise. Now you can hear and also see, of course, we've got a fairly lowish sort of tone there. So let's have a play and let's see if we can change that a little. So if we change the low part of the tone here to 255, we can hear the tone has gone slightly up. And this is something slightly interesting about the Game Boy. On the Game Boy, the higher the number, the higher the tone. On the other systems, the lower the number, the higher the tone. So that is something we do have to notice on the Game Boy. And of course, this will make a larger difference because these are the high bits than these bits here. So if I put a 1 here, we'll suddenly get a very high pitched tone. Actually, I think that's too high pitched to even hear. So there we go. So you can see we can change the... Um, the pitch by just changing the high and low value for the tone. That's very straightforward and of course we can change the volume here if we just change these two bits to zero. Our tone will now be very quiet. So that's all pretty straightforward. So what about these? Well the wave duty changes the shape of the tone. Now we only have square waves on offer to us but by changing these values 
we can change the shape of the wave a little bit. So I'd just suggest you try those, you try various values there and just see which kind of tone has the nicer sound for you. Now with regards to the sound length, let's try this. Well, we have to turn on the sound length with this bit here. Well, you may have thought nothing happened there. Well, actually it was so fast you didn't hear it. You see, that was very short indeed. And the smaller the number here, the longer the tone, which is quite strange, but that's the way it works. If we put zero here, you can hear that the tone is relatively long. So of course, if we turn our loop back on here by setting this bit, then the length really won't matter because once the loop is on, the tone will last forever anyway. So what about our options here? Well, of course, we can just change the volume here, but we've already tried that. So let's now have a play with the envelopes. So if we set a very low envelope of one and we want our envelope direction to be down. So we set a bit zero here in this, in this bit here. Now you could hear there, the sound got quieter over time. So let's try changing our envelope to seven here. You can hear now it's taking a lot longer to get quiet, but that's not all we can do. We can actually make it get louder. So what we need to do is set this to one, which says up, and then we need to set the start value and I'm gonna set it all to zero. So we'll start from silence and we'll get louder. So let's hear that. So there we go. So that's what we can do with our basic tone channel. The, um, the envelopes are all just linear. There's no um, seesaw kind of effect to my knowledge anyway. So let's run that out. So let's have a look at channel one with that sweep register. So we'll start with the sweep registers bits all set to zero, which will effectively disable it. Okay. And now let's set all the bits of the number of shifts to one, all three, and we'll set all the bits of the time to one. And let's see what sound that gives us. Now you can hear the tone is going up over time. And of course, if we change the direction, now we're going down. And what happens if we reduce the time? You can hear it's going, going down much faster now. And if we reset that, But if we reduce the number of shifts, what happens now? Well, again, we're going down very fast because we're moving in fewer steps now. So as you can see, we can change the time that it takes to make the shift and the number of steps of the shift and the direction of the shift. So the sweep register allows us to do some kind of pitch changes throughout the sound. And that's of course automatic because if you look at my code, I'm actually halting the processor here. So there's no, there's no processing panel being used in this. It's all the hardware doing the sound manipulation itself. So there we go, there's the sweep register. Now, what about this wave register? As I say, when I first heard about the wave register, I was, semi-excited thinking oh you know well I can sample music onto it and play the music back and things well no you can't and if you really want to just see how little you can do with the Game Boy sound chip I'd suggest you check out Beat Mania on the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy Regular I think it works on as well um, it looks quite impressive until you check it out on the Wonderswan because the Game Boy had its ass handed to it in this case. The Wonderswan version is really good. The Game Boy version is terrible in comparison. So we're not going to be really doing any great music on the Game Boy with the wave sampling, but we can use it anyway. So we do need 16 bytes of wave information, and we're going to do that with this. So the wave pattern RAM starts with FF30 and goes all the way to FF3F. And so that's 16 bytes. And as I've said, there are two nibbles in each byte that are two samples. The um, high nibble is the first sample and the low nibble is the second sample. Now, just to create a basic square wave in this, you can see we've set A to zero and we've set B to one, 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 one. And then we're gonna load in B twice into the memory area and all the rest of the bits are gonna be zero. And this will create a, a, a very basic wave for us just so we can get some sound out of the Game Boy sound chip. So this is enough for the wave. And then what we need to do is define the other options for the wave channel. 
Now the Wave channel does have quite different options for reasons best known to itself. The volume is just two bits and maximum volume on the Wave channel doesn't match up to maximum volume on the other channels or at least as far as I could make it work. Of course we need to turn the channel on because we have this strange enable channel bit option here with just one bit for that entire register, very strange. We have a frequency which is very similar to everything else. We also have a length, again it works exactly the same way as the other ones. So let's hear our Wave play. And so, of course, we can change the pitch just like any other. And if we want to, we can change the shape of the sound in some way. So we could take this out and we could put some more bees in here. So what I'm now doing is I'm putting more peaks into that sound. And you can hear now it sounds very different. So, as I say, the... Um, the 16 bytes that make up that wave sample will, will affect the sound accordingly. But again, you know, I'm not aware of any way of getting it to digitise speech or anything. You're just going to have to make simple beeps and things. Now, one thing that is quite useful for this is, um, as I say, if you look at the AY sound chip and if you look at the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Color looks inferior because it's only got two, wave, two tone channels. But what I've actually managed to do is you can use the wave channel as an extra tone channel and you can get it playing along with the other two channels to do a very, I did a very crude AY emulation on the Game Boy. I'm no great programmer, I couldn't write a really good one, but I was able to play my, um, my Chibi Akuma's theme tune on the uh, Game Boy using it, an AY emulator and Arcus Tracker on the Game Boy. So as I say, if you need a third tone channel, this is what you need to use to do it, but you just need to find a wave in here that will mimic the other channels and get the volumes to match. But as I say, you know, perfectly usable if a bit strange. I can't say I can really notice within the Game Boy games which ones are using the wave channel and which aren't. You never hear any speech or anything, so it's obviously being just used for general beeping sounds. But you know, it's um, perfectly usable, so there it is. It's, I suppose it's a nice thing to have. I just kind of wish there was a normal third tone channel as well. And then we've got a noise channel. The noise channel is really very similar to the other systems we've looked at. So you've got a volume, you've got direction and envelope again, because the noise channel also has an envelope. It has no frequencies in the same way as the other channels. It does have its own options though. And in the same way as I think it was the Sam Coupe, you have a clock speed, which is the, basically the frequency of the noise. And then you've got the option for 15 bit or seven bit. And if you set the 7 bit, set this bit to 1, the counter stop, what this will do is it will make the noise sound very, very synthetic, more like a computer crashing, if you can imagine that, than actual sort of the distortion noise you're probably used to. And then you've got the dividing ratio, and this kind of reduces the frequency of the noise. If you think of like an AM radio versus a CD quality noise, whatever that is, um, that, that's kind of the difference. It doesn't really change the pitch. It more, it more makes it sound slightly muffled. We'll have a play with that now. So here you can hear the noise. And so then if we change these bits, we'll just set these to one. I think I need to set... Now you see I've gone too low. The, um, the noise is very, it goes very low. Now because the noise is very low at the maximum setting, I'm just going to set this and hopefully this will give some nice low noise. So there we go, we've got quite a nice rumble there. So that's very very slow noise and any slower than that you really can't really make out at all and now you've got your sort of um, waterfall kind of sound or your TV distortion and then if we change these bits here so if we set the um, dividing ratio bits all to zero the sound sounds like this which sounds fairly crisp and then if we change all the bits to one You can say, you can hear it sounds more muffled now. So that's what our um, dividing ratio does. And then, as I said before, if we just turn that off and set this bit to one. Now, this no longer really sounds like noise. It's more like a computer beep. And so that's what we can do with the noise channel. So that's all pretty um, flexible. A lot of options there. Now what we really want to do is we really want to recreate our chibi sound function. So first of all, let's hear chibi sound in action. So we're starting with 8-0 and we're going through the loud tones. We go down to 4-0, which is 64 of course, and this will be the full range of tones that are provided. Then we start again with quieter tones from 64 to 0. 0 will turn off the sounds 
and then we will go back to 255 with the noise effect. So here we're in the quiet tones. Now you can hear we're in the noise effects and um, the Game Boy's noise effects don't quite map as nicely as some of the other ones to the um, TV sound driver. But again, with all of the, in all the cases, the pitches are changing through the range available on the system in a common way compared to the numbers. And then we're into the quieter tones now. And that's the end of the noise and we're back into the regular tones. So there we go. So how does this work? Well, it's quite simple. There's, we have this chibi sound command and we pass a single byte. If it's zero, then we go to the silent function here, which mutes all the sound channels just by turning them off in the mixer. Then what we want to do, because the sounds are inverted on the Game Boy, that is the um, high tones have big numbers, that's the opposite of most of the system. So we have to invert the tone bits. That's the rightmost six bits. And then we back up our registry in H. Next, what we want to do is we want to set our volume to maximum and then we want to work out what volume we're going to use. So we're either going to use this low volume definition here or this high volume definition here. And we decide that based on bit six, whether it's set or not. Once we've got our chosen volume, we set FF12. We're using channel one here. We're not using the sweep register, of course, but uh, anyway. So then we want to set our tone. We do this by taking the three rightmost bits from the 6-bit tone definition Chibi sound takes, shifting these bits to the left, storing them in the low tone register, then taking the remaining three bits and storing them in the high tone register. Of course, we do have to turn the sound on as well, so we are in bit one here. We don't use any kind of envelopes or timeouts, we just use an infinite loop on the tone. Of course, we will turn the tone off with the, with the zero command. And then if we're not playing any noise, then we're finished. If we are playing noise, then we need to do some more work. So what we need to do is we need to set the noise frequency. There's a range of 15 usable noise sound effects within the Game Boy's range that are reasonably audible. So we're going to use the, only three of the bits of the tone definition. We need to invert those because we invert, unfortunately inverted them earlier and they're actually in the opposite way around we need now for the noise. Uh, then what we do is we shift the bits to the left by one to get them into the range that the Game Boy sounds good with. We then want the high quality option here. So we're setting these bits here, which will improve the sound quality a little bit. And then what we want to do is we want to use the volume that we selected up here. So we're copying it from channel one into the noise channel, channel four. Finally, we mute the tone channel because we don't really want to hear that now. And we turn on the noise channel in the mixer. And then we just start the noise with this command here. And that's all we really need to do. So really all Chibi Sound is in all of these cases is it just applying what we learned in the examples to a common way so that we can make our simple sound effects in our basic games later. So that's Chibi Sound on the Game Boy. If you've been following the series, you can probably guess we're going to do the Game Gear next. But next week's going to be a little bit interesting because the Game Gear isn't the, actually the only system that uses that sound chip. The sound chip that the Game Gear and the Master System use is also used by the Mega Drive and the BBC Micro. So we're going to be looking at those systems as well. And that means we're going to be looking at 6502 assembly, 68000 assembly and Z80 assembly all next week. But the concepts of making the sound chip do what we want will be the exact same in all cases. Anyway, that's enough for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching and goodbye.